Hi everybody, I'm Art Mills. What we're gonna be doing here is telling you how to rip plywood without a guide. See a lot of videos on YouTube about ripping plywood by clamping a board on it or using a speed square or something crazy like that. But today you're gonna learn how the pros do it out on the construction sites. Now, as always for safety, I gotta say, don't take nothing here I say seriously, this is just a skit for entertainment value. And also, I'm not making any money from doing this, I'm just helping you guys out. So if you could, like, comment, share. I'll tell you, when I'm out there working in the hot sun and my phone goes off and I see that somebody has commented or liked on my video, it just makes my day. So if y'all could do that, it'd be great. First thing you wanna do is set it up on horses. Some videos have you doing it on the ground. You don't want to do that. Set it up on some horses, set you some two by fours across it. Now you don't want to cut across like this because as you can see, it's going to create a pinch point which is going to rocket your saw. You want to cut across here. Now I've got this piece of plywood here. It's not a full sheet, but this is just for demonstrations. You're going to have a full sheet. Now obviously if you wanted to rip it this way, you could cut a little bit off over here or you could run some boards this way as well under there. Just something to keep it so it's not going to go topsy-turvy or pinch your blade. Now the first thing we come to is measuring. Whatever your measurement is that you're trying to rip, say 36. Now also, you're gonna to wanna to go on my channel, subscribe, of course, I really appreciate it when you do that. And check out the other videos. There's some Circular Saw 101, it's got a bind guide, so you make sure that the saw you have isn't fighting you when you're trying to make a cut. Some of the saws, like the button saw or whatever, you, you can't even work with. So watch those videos first, and then watch this more advanced guide. I'm measuring a 36 on this side, and then the 36 on this side. Come in a little closer, Bernard. Now, if I had to measure like a 36 over here and a 37 over here, I'd mark it so it was right on the edge. Because right where it needs to be 37 is exactly on the edge. If you mark it out here an inch, then it's not going to be 37 right where you need it, and it'll be wrong. So you can take a straight edge, like a level, or it's, it's hard to get two by fours that are straight enough. So you really want a level or just a chalk line like this. It's got a little hook. Pull it across there. Now I'm going to hold it tight with my thumb, but for beginners, it's easier if you wrap it around your finger like that. And then you just use your thumb to hold it right on the point of your mark. Now you want to come in the middle. You don't want to strike over here or over here. Be sure to lift it straight up and let it fall straight down. Now the thing that controls where the saw goes is when your hand goes like this. I'm going to come and put my back to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. When your hand goes like this, it controls where the saw is going. So you just want to look at your hand and practice this. And when you're making the cut, you want to keep in mind what you're doing. Now I'm doing big movements just to show you, but running the saw is like driving a car. You don't want to do big movements and then do big corrections because then the saw is going to jump back and cut you. It's going to kick back. So just little tiny corrections. Now, if you're going down here and it starts to get off some, then you'll just back the saw up slowly, very slowly. It likes to kick when you back up. And then you'll go forward again. All of that's got to happen real slow. Respect that saw. It will cut you. It doesn't care about you. Sometimes at the end, the chalk line doesn't mark all the way. So I just use my speed square and mark it.
in one of my other videos, somebody was asking me, I think it was Cave Diver, something or another. I can't remember exactly who it was. But anyway, it was a good question. Somebody was asking me how I stand when I cut. Now, you just want to get to where you're in a, in a position where you can take action. You might have to jump out of the way, keep that saw from kicking and cutting you or anything. I put a hand right here, but I'm not really leaning on it. See, I can hold myself up. This is more or less just to hold the board. Now, if this board was going to slide, I'd put some clamps over here or something like that. Now, when I'm cutting, I'm not leaning at all on this saw because if it kicks out and you're using this hand to hold yourself up, then it's, it's really gonna be bad. That's why the videos I've seen where people were cutting on the floor, you can't do that because it's gonna kick and you're gonna fall on it. Basically try to copy everything I'm doing here as best as you can, because I can't think of everything I point out, don't do this, do that. Just copy me as best as you can and this is how you're gonna get good. Now, of course, the blade is going to be on this side because I want this side of the wood. I've been cutting long enough, I can cut just as good with either hand. You might have to figure something else out because you can only use your one hand. But I tell you, if you practice with your off hand, you're gonna get good with it. That's how I did. Before I restart this cut from over here, I'm gonna back it up some because you want that blade to get up to full speed before you start cutting or else it'll kick out on you. Let's get to where I can see it and start cutting. Now you can see through here, this isn't the straightest cut on earth. Right here, I will go and cut that again. But when you're cutting sheathing or whatever, it doesn't even matter. Even when you're cutting trim type items that are gonna be finished products on your house, you got your bead of caulk that goes an eighth of an inch and that's what's gonna make it look professional. So don't stress yourself over making it the most perfect cut on earth. Just make it good. Now how you're gonna get good is by practicing. It took me maybe an hour or two after watching some professionals cut a cutting wood on the back of my pickup to get good. How you do that breeze. I went out to a construction site and climbed in the dumpster and got this out. Now they'll let you do that. Sometimes they've got lumber laying around that's not in a construction site. You just have to pull some nails out and watch the nails that you can't see because when your saw hits that, it will throw that nail right in your eyeball. Now just be nice to the construction workers. They'll give you that free wood happily. And then you can just come and make your marks, say every five inches, six inches, whatever. Wear them off with your Speed square. Now pay attention to the way you turn your wrist. Every time you make a mistake, use it as a lesson. What did I do wrong that time? How can I do it better the next cut? Of course, you know from my other videos that you need to unplug your saw when you set the depth. I don't do it because I'm a professional.
pick up your pieces here. And just put your speed square down it and you can see how straight your cut was. And try to judge. Go ahead and look at your pieces every cut or two. And don't forget when you're climbing in that dumpster, you can lose your life. So be careful. Stepping around, you can step through a piece of wood and catch a nail in the vein or something. Who knows? Construction site's a dangerous place. Just be careful out there. All right. Like, comment, share. I appreciate y'all. Bye-bye.